Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. We have today uh, Undersecretary Ernesto Abelia of the Communications and the Strategic uh, Department of the Department of Foreign Affairs. So uh, we have uh, today our pre-departure briefing for the participation of President Rodrigo Duterte to the 2018 APEC Economic Leaders Meeting at uh, Papua New Guinea. So uh, good morning. Any questions? Um, yes, I can I'd like Sorry. to begin first with a, uh, an opening statement to minimize questions. <laughs> 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 All right. Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, President Rodrigo Roba Duterte joins 20 other leaders and representatives of the economies of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC uh, Forum in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea from the 17th to the 18th of November as they gather for the 19th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting for 2018. This is a new era for Filipino engagement on the world stage. The Asia-Pacific region represents the epicenter of global growth, making APEC the most important economic cooperation platform in the world. And as one of the best performing economies in the fastest growing region in the world, the Philippines has much to contribute, as well as much to gain, from a fruitful discussion with our neighbors, friends, and allies in APEC. We will stand tall as we advance and assert peace, prosperity, and independence in pursuit of a comfortable and secure life for the Filipino people. APEC has served as an incubator for new ideas and concepts in furthering inclusive growth and economic development in the region. The forum has facilitated initiatives that encourage greater cooperation, collaboration, connectivity, innovation, reform and transformation among institutions and organizations in civil society, public and private sectors and services, as well as the academe. Over 21 countries comprise APEC. Countries are referred to as economies, and presidents and prime ministers are identified as leaders of economies. APEC allows economies to engage what are called customs territories, such as Chinese Taipei and Hong Kong, China. APEC has been at the forefront of reducing tariffs and trade barriers in the region and facilitating the flow of investments and movement of people across the region. Papua New Guinea plays host to APEC for the first time since joining the forum in 1993. For its part, the Philippines played host to APEC in 1996 and 2015. Papua New Guinea is, interestingly, home to over 40,000 Filipinos and over 200 Philippine companies operate in the country. The Philippines provides important services to the people of PNG foremost of which is agricultural expertise, assisting local rice growers to improve yields and to maximize efficiency. President Duterte received Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill during his official visit to the Philippines in May of 2018, this year. Meanwhile, over 5.7 million Filipinos overseas reside in the APEC region. Filipinos in the region contribute 57% of remittances to the Philippines, and the Philippine trade with APEC economies comprise 84% of the Philippines' total trade worldwide, with 82% of our merchandise exports destined for the APEC region. Uh, in turn, 85% of all imports to the Philippines come from its economic partners in APEC. Also, about 83% of tourist arrivals to the Philippines also come from the APEC region. At the forum, the President will join a dialogue before prominent business leaders during the summit of Chief Executive Officers of the APEC Business Advisory Council, or ABAC, and meet with leaders of the Pacific Islands Forum. The President joins other leaders in affirming commitment to an international rules-based regime 
support of the multilateral trading system embodied by organizations like the World Trade Organization. The President conveys his support for mechanisms that will enable our MSMEs, or MISMIS as they call it, to take advantage of digital and online platforms to benefit their enterprises and to bring their products and services overseas. To this end, the APEC adopted the Boracay Action Agenda in working towards enabling MSMEs in the region to link internationally. He joins other leaders also in support of formulating a new and inclusive APEC vision beyond the year 2020. He calls attention to our efforts at ensuring food security for our people and advancing economic opportunities for women. Within APEC, the government is preparing Filipinos to meet the challenges and opportunities of a digital world where artificial intelligence, blockchains, big data, and the Internet of Things are redefining the way we do business, deliver services, and education of the young, especially orienting them now towards sciences, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. As we look forward to participating and contributing to the APEC Forum, we are reminded of values that guide our foreign policy which is advancing peace and prosperity in pursuit of a comfortable and secure life for all Filipinos. The Philippines has entered a brave new era of engagement on the world stage. End of statement. Thank you, Yusek. So, uh, any question, uh, MPC? Joyce? <laughs> Sir, will the President visit the Filipino community in Papua New Guinea? Uh, yes, there's, going, uh, there's a planned uh, Philcom meeting with the uh, approximately 40,000 people, uh, 40,000 Filipinos based there. Uh, he is, he is uh, scheduled to meet up with them. Any other questions? You said, how about uh, bilateral meetings? Will the president have bilateral meetings with fellow leaders? Uh, he will have a, there, there's, there's bound to be a, they have a lot of, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, let me read to you this. Uh, what do you call it? A lot of it is going to be taken up in, uh, in dialogues with, uh, but there, as far as we know, there haven't been any specific bilateral meetings. But there will, <coughs> there will be there there will be efforts to organize some meetings. As far as I know, uh, it hasn't reached my desk yet, but I know that there'll be a lot of dialogues with other partner countries. Thank you, Yusek. Anyone else? Yes, yes, please. Good morning, Yusek. Yusek, I wonder if you could talk more about uh, the trade agenda in the summit. Like, what are the issues that the president intends to raise? And, of course, we know that trade deals like the CPTPP or the TPP-11 will be discussed in APEC. Is President Duterte inclined to join, to have the Philippines join the new so-called TPP-11? Thank you. Um, there will be discussions, although we have not had we have not received any of the president's position at this stage. But there will be a number of discussions along that line. Okay, thank you, Ayim. Um, other questions? Joyce again, DCM. Sir, who will be part of the official delegation? Same lang din po ba uh, with the delegation in Singapore? Um, as far as I know. Uh, uh, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs will be there, but he will not. He, uh, he may miss the. Uh, there's an overlap meeting on the 15th, but aside from that, the uh, Secretary of uh, Trade will be there. Um, I'm not sure yet. It hasn't been confirmed, but I did hear that Secretary Dominguez may be joining them. Okay. Are we done? Otherwise, Are we're you good. Okay? Yes.
Sir, I wonder if there are there any plans for President Duterte to meet with uh, Vice U.S. Vice President Pence or um, for PNG, the Russian Prime Minister Medvedev? Um, as far as I know, the President is, uh, there are no set meetings regarding these matters. But uh, he continues to engage all the leaders from all the nations. But uh, the first and foremost uh, engagement he will have is with the Filipino community. Sir, and speaking of, of that, could you um, elaborate on the profile of the Filipino community in Papua New Guinea? Uh, you mentioned there are about 40,000 of them. Like, what industries, what would be their profile? What kind of professions do they have? And do we see increasing relations with PNG given the visits by both leaders to each of the two countries? Um, mainly services, uh, mainly services and skilled services. But I think first and for, uh, in the forefront, and uh, which is very interesting, is the way that our Filipino agriculturists are being used, especially to, uh, especially to help in the increase. Uh, in, in fact, I, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right, uh, the, the beginnings of and, in, and the propagation of and the increase of rice production in the area. Uh, apparently, it has begun with our, with our uh, rice experts. And so it is along these lines that our Filipino workers are used. A lot of skills. Thank you. Satisfied, MPC. Okay. You say we've had uh, APEC summits before. What would make this summit in Papua New Guinea different for the Philippines? Well, <coughs> as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a uh, an inc there's going to be an increased emphasis on miss miss on micro small and medium enterprises, especially in, in in being able to bring to mainstream them in the global market. And so, uh, aside from that, uh, well, the others, of course, a reduction of tariffs and stuff like that, but a greater participation for our micro small and medium medium enterprise medium enterprises, uh, greater opportunities, greater assistance greater, uh, uh, for example, transfer technology. And so these are going to be, this is going to be very exciting, especially for uh, the so-called Miss Miss, uh, uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. So we can say that's the central message of the president when he comes to the summit. Basically, uh, uh, the theme, for example, let me just, uh, uh, let me uh, it reiterate, is harnessing inclusive opportunities and embracing the digital future. Since we are orienting the nation towards uh, being able to participate in the, the, the increasingly digital world, uh, that is also going to be the emphasis, not, uh, not just of the, of the forum itself, but also of the president, making sure that uh, our, our, it, our own economies are more inclusive and are more participative, especially for the smaller groups. Okay, do you have any, um, no more questions, MPC? Okay, so at this point, we'd like to thank uh, Yusek Abelia. So uh, back to studio, back to Radio Pilipinas and PTV4. Thank you very much.